everybody, welcome back. It's the American Civil War Collector with you here again, and I'm happy to be bringing you my first Doug Civil War Relic. Now, like usual, I'll be running HD images across the screen so that everybody can get a close-up look at these. And what you're going to be looking at today are nine Confederate Doug marbles from a camp around Saltville, Virginia. Now, as you can see, these are just plain clay marbles, which was par for the course at the time. Now you see color ones and decorated ones, but they weren't as common. Soldiers didn't have the time for that. They just kind of wanted to make their marble and get to playing. Now these were formed with a bullet mold, as most were during the time. It makes sense. They had it. It made perfectly round items. These are 69 caliber. And if you do a little digging, it means that they were probably made by a soldier carrying either a Model 1816 or a Model 1842 musket. And the 1842 was essentially a modified 1860, and both of them were used heavily during the war, so that checks out as well. Now, Saltville is an interesting little place that some of you may or may not have heard about. It was actually the uh, spot of four battles during the Civil War. Uh, the last two took place in 1864, and the second battle saw the Union finally overtake the Salt Works. The first battle is the one that's more known in history, and it carries the moniker the Saltville Massacre. And what happened was, during the first battle of Saltville, the U.S. 5th Colored Cavalry Unit were actually in action, and they participated in the final assault on Chestnut Ridge. And it is claimed that the Confederate defenders were so enraged at seeing armed colored troops storm across their homeland that they were able to hold out the attack for another six hours uh, helping out until nighttime came and saved them. They had to retreat into the town, but they saved it. Now, it got the moniker because after the battle, some Civil War soldiers and Home Guard under the notorious Champ Ferguson went out onto the battlefields and actually began executing wounded and captured Union troops with a particular interest in the colored troops. There have been several investigations into it, and nobody can nail down an exact number, but it's estimated that between 45 and 48 colored troops were executed after the battle. Now, Saltville was so important that after its collapse, a Richmond paper actually said that the loss of Savannah was less troublesome than the loss of Saltville. Now, salt was very important during the Civil War. It was actually William Tecumseh Sherman who quoted, Salt is enemy contraband, for an army that has salt can feed its troops and therefore be a threat. So getting rid of Saltville, which produced up to two-thirds of the salt for the South during the Civil War, was a big deal. Now, a couple of other quick facts about marbles, and I'll get out of everybody's hair. Uh, marbles have been around forever. We really can't even trace their roots. They show up in Mesopotamia, Egypt, Rome. Caesar himself is documented as playing marbles. They're mentioned in two of Shakespeare's plays. Washington played marbles. Lincoln himself played marbles. Actually, while Lincoln was studying to be an attorney, he roomed with a gentleman named Henry Onstott. Henry's son, T.G. Onstott, wrote memoirs in 1902, and he recalls, my first knowledge of Lincoln was as a great marble player. He kept us small boys running in all directions, gathering up marbles that would scatter. Now, after Lincoln was president, the stresses of the Civil War mounted, and it's reported that he could take solace in some makeshift games of marbles. One of these reported stories is Lincoln's walking down the street towards the Army headquarters in Washington with the telegraph clerk and one of his sons. Lincoln bends over, picks up a round, smooth stone, and he challenges the clerk and his son to a contest. They would shoot stones in marble fashion to see who could get their stone to the headquarters steps in the least number of shots. When they reached the first step, Lincoln had won, and for a man who had that many pressures, uh, found a couple of minute respite from all the pressure. So, there you have it. Some very simple, very basic marbles, and yet you can tie so much history to them. Between Saltville, which has a bunch of history in its own, and all the people that may have played marbles, it's really fascinating. It's really cool to think about. I appreciate everybody dropping in. If you enjoyed the video and learned something, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. I appreciate it. This is the American Civil War Collector reminding everybody to stay civil.